Hey, I'm Caro and I'm going to show you how to pack for a weekend hike or even maybe a few more days in a 40 litre pack. It makes sense to want to make our backpacks as light as possible whilst not giving up any of the essentials either for comfort or for safety. It's good for our bodies and means that we can spend our time enjoying amazing wild places, not enduring them. There's lots of different approaches to packing a backpack from the ultralight where every gram or even half a gram counts up to the kitchen sink and pretty much everything in between. I'm going to show you how I pack for a weekend hike somewhere in the middle and all fitting into a 40 litre pack. Here's everything I would take for a couple of days in the bush probably in warmer conditions. And you know what, with just a bit more food, I take exactly the same stuff for maybe three or four, maybe even five days, all within a 40 litre pack. I like to think about things in categories, house, clothes, food, safety, and accessories. So I'll go through those categories now and show you what I take in my pack for an overnight hike. Starting with your house. Now when it comes to my house, I like to think of it as something to sleep in, on and under. In, I mean my sleeping bag, on, I mean my sleeping mat, and under, my tent or my shelter. So that's my house taken care of, easy. Next is clothes. I will comfortably wear the same gear in the bush, maybe four or five days in a row. Inside my pack, I would have a full set of thermals, that's top and bottom, and a beanie in a dry bag to keep dry. I'd have a mid layer for warmth, that could be a fleece or a down jacket or some sort of a technical jacket to keep the chills away. Uh, when it comes to rain jacket, depending on the forecast, I'd have a lightweight jacket, rain jacket like this one, all folded up, or a more hardcore one if bad weather is expected. In terms of clothes, the only other thing I have would be a pair of gaiters. And for the Aussie summer conditions, definitely a pair of gaiters is a great thing to have. What's in my kitchen? Well, there's my kitchen there. A pot set, inside my pot set is a gas canister and a small cooking stove, all folds together. And in the top I have my only cup, a nice folding easy cup that pops inside. I will eat straight out of the pot so I don't need bowls and plates, that kind of thing. A folding knife and a long handled titanium spoon. That's the only cutlery and crockery that I have. Next to my kitchen I have my food, part of my kitchen. So all my food for the two days is in a food bag and my wrap for my lunches just kept flat in that that I'll slide down the side of my pack. Next to my kitchen, my water. So I can carry two kinds of water carriers with me. A hydration bladder that I can drink from during the day while we're walking along the track. And I also always carry a drinking bottle because you never know if a bladder might spring a leak, it might burst, you might drop your pack, it could split, who knows? And with a water bottle, you'll know you'll always be able to carry your life-saving water. Next, we have safety. So for safety, I carry a personal locator beacon, a PLB, a whistle. I have my mobile phone in a waterproof case. Now that's my GPS and obviously it's also the first port of call in an emergency. Oh, and definitely for taking photos. And my first aid kit. Now that doesn't look much like a first aid kit, but I have scribbled a big cross on the front and I tell my friends with me, if you're looking for my first aid kit and I can't tell you where it is, that's what to look for. Also for safety, I have my topographic map and my compass in a waterproof case. I do keep a pencil and a notepad in there as well. It can be really handy at times. Sun hat and to keep the mobile charged if you're using it as a navigation device I have a power bank now this is quite a big one that I keep inside a waterproof bag so this is about a 10,000 milliamp hour and it's quite heavy so there's a way of cutting back on the weight and just grabbing a small one so this might look like a lipstick but it's actually a 2,000 milliamp hour nice and light power bank And 
then the final category is accessories. In my accessories, I have lip balm and a hanky, much better than tissues flying around the bush. My wallet, instead of carrying a big wallet, I recycle a produce bag that's a Ziploc and I keep in it a little bit of cash, driver's license, credit card, that kind of thing. My head torch, and sunscreen and insect repellent, sunglasses, mm, my toilet bag. In here is a small shovel, um, some toilet paper and some hand sanitizer. Little small folding shovel. The other thing I've taken to carry in my toilet bag lately is these cornstarch bags. If I'm in an area that's sensitive or is hard to actually dig a hole in to get it to the necessary depth of about 15 centimetres, I'll actually carry out my waste. And these cornstarch bags are great because they're totally biodegradable, compostable, and I can take my waste with me back home. And the last thing I'm going to cover off is this. This is my fire lighting kit. No, it's not a bag of frozen berries. Again, recycling a Ziploc bag that had produce in it. In here I have a flint, some waterproof matches, little bits of cardboard, a few little fire lighters, and, uh, and some cotton wool. And there you have it. That's everything I would carry for an overnight hike, even up to two, three, four, five days in the bush, just with some extra food, all in a 40 litre pack. And now it's simply a matter of putting it all inside the 40 litre pack. Let me show you how I put everything I need for a few days into a 40 litre pack. I'm gonna start with my house. The bulky items. I'm putting it in lengthways. Down here. Then my sleeping bag is a pretty bulky item. I call the bulky items blockers and then the small items that can go around it, the stuffers. So another blocker. I'm going to put my sleeping bag in next and I'm putting it flat along the bottom. It will take a bit of work to fit things. So the sleeping bag's flat along the bottom, the tent's up the side. Next thing is my sleeping mat. Also flat, horizontal along the bottom, in front of the sleeping bag. You can see still loads of room in here. Next I'm going to take my dry warm thermals for night, top and bottom and a beanie. Right down the bottom, squish them in. I want to fill up all the little empty air gaps. Next I'm going to take my warm layer and in fact I'm going to freestyle it and stuff it down in the gaps. Next is my stove, my kitchen. It's quite heavy so I'm going to put that down low and towards the back so none of those hard edges will dig into my body. That's just here. Loads of room. Okay, so next I've got my food bag and those wraps for lunch. I'm going to slide those down the outside so they don't get crushed. Raincoat. Toilet bag. Getting near the top now. First aid kit. Still lots of room. Then power banks. And oh, what else? Well, my map and compass. A water bottle. I'm going to wear my gaiters and my sun hat. Don't 
don't really need my sunnies right now. So all these small accessories fit really well in the lid or what I call the brain of the pack. That's where my PLB is going to be. Whereas I'm going to keep my whistle, lip balm, hanky and mobile phone in the hip pocket. my head torch also in the brain. Then in the pocket under the brain, my wallet, fire lighting kit. And sunscreen and insect repellent may as well go in the brain as well. Last but not least, I keep my water bladder on top. Now a lot of people do put it in the special water hydration pouch inside, but I find that that adds a lot of pressure against it and I want to make sure that it's kept nice and safe on top. And we're good to go, still lots of room. If you're wondering, it's about 10 and a half kilos with a litre and a half of water. Wow, gone are the days of the massive 20 kilo packs. It's just not needed anymore. You know what? My back appreciates it. I know my knees certainly do. And it means that I can enjoy amazing places like this so much longer. Mm -hmm.